Well, I hope Sinu and Nilu didn't break your banks, cause we're getting some awesome characters in Genshin Impact's 3.2 update. The anticipated Dendro Archon, Nahida, along with several returning characters like Yoimiya, Chout, and Yamiko, will be up, but who should you go for? How's it going everyone? This is Kay, and it's that time again where our wallets will get destroyed, and most of us will shed those salty, salty tears. But that's okay, you won't be alone, I'll probably join you. I'll break down all the character's strengths and weaknesses, their roles, a little comparison, and of course, who you should pull for. So, starting off with the star of the show, Nahida is possibly going to be the best Dendro character in the game. There's really not a lot of competition to begin with, but she's definitely a great character, not perfect perfect, but great nonetheless. She can fulfill different roles such as a reliable Dendro enabler thanks to her skill, allowing you to quick swap her off field and still trigger reactions. Nahida can also be a driver because she's a catalyst user meaning all her normal attacks will apply Dendro, so it's great for bloom reactions if you have an off field hydro enabler. She can also be an EM supporter because her A1 will provide high EM buffs to the on-field character. Since a lot of reactions, especially Dendro, relies on EM, this is a great ability. There were complaints from players wishing it applied to off-field characters as well, similar to Albedo, but sadly, that's not the case. It's only for the active character. A4 passive will also help a lot for her DPS since her crit rate and damage for her skill will increase based on EM stats above 200. This gives some substats flexibility for your artifacts cause any boost in crit rates for a skill is always a good thing. This also encourages you to focus on EM, which is her primary stat. It's best to have a max of 1000 EM to get the most out of her passives, but obviously it depends on your build. Now what makes Nahida amazing is her 100% uptime on applying Dendro to enemies even off field. 25 seconds for the skill duration with a max of 6 seconds cooldown. 25 seconds will last through most rotations, even for Sinu's long burst time. Once you start a new rotation, all you have to do is tap or hold her skill to scan enemies and reapply the ability again. Simple as that. The tick damage occurs every 2.5 seconds, which is standard ICD for applying elements to enemies. Basically, this means every time her Tri Karma hits, it'll apply Dendro, which means you're triggering reactions all the time. Keep in mind, these numbers can change since Nahida isn't officially out yet. Moving on to her burst, which is meant to enhance her skill, which for many is sort of a letdown because her burst looks so beautiful and a lot of players expected it to do damage or something, but the enhancements are still pretty good. Tick damage from her skill increases if you have Pyro in the team, burst will last longer if you have Hydro, resulting in longer EM buff, and her Tri Karma will trigger faster, resulting in more damage if you have Electro. Just a quick reminder, Quicken has its own aura, meaning it has good duration, so you'll have constant aggravate or spread damage because Nahida will consistently reapply it, it'll only disappear if you apply a different element like Hydro or Pyro to Quicken. Now, Nahida isn't perfect. Her skill requires you to scan enemies manually or at the very least hit them with her skill in order to apply the Tri Karma effect. Scanning can take some time, not a whole lot, but if enemies aren't close enough for her to tap her skill, for example, if enemies are at a distance or if they're on all sides, you'll most likely have to hold the ability to scan all of them in one go. There's also a max limit of 8 enemies, which is honestly a lot, and most Abyss won't have that many all at once, which leads to another problem. Way Waves of enemies. When enemies die, you will have to change back to her and reapply the skill, which can hurt your rotations, especially characters like Sinu who needs to be in the burst state. In comparison to DMC, Dendro main character just to let you know, where all you have to do is throw his burst out and there will be constant Dendro application even when enemies die. Now, this doesn't suddenly mean Nahida's Dendro application sucks. It's not great for wave battles if Ending rotations early will hurt your DPS, but it's godly for boss battles or non-wave battles. So a quick comparison with DMC, there's no AoE range meaning enemies can't just hop out of the affected area. Once they're hit with the Tri Karma, it's on them for a long time. She also doesn't rely on ER for constant Dendro application, unlike MC. This isn't me discrediting DMC, I just want to let you know both has their pros and cons when it comes to Dendro reactions. So another bad thing about Nahida, not necessarily about the character, but more so artifacts. I'm sure you know, EM artifacts drop rates are very low. Even if you get one, it doesn't mean you'll get good substats. Next, let's talk about best girl in Inazuma. Yoimiya is a strong single target pyro character who excels in vape teams. I'm sure you're all thinking the same thing. Wait a minute, that sounds like Hu Tao. Yes, Hu Tao is golly and it's 
generally agreed by the community that if you want the better Vape Pyro DPS, Hu Tao would be the main choice. But Yuimiya has a lot of good things going for her as well. First off, she's a lot easier to use. You don't have to worry about cancel animations for every attack, stamina management for C0 from charge attacks, dash cooldowns, HP management, and other stuff. You can basically turn on your monkey brain and tap buttons till her skill ends. Most complex thing is double tapping the aim button to animation cancel her final shot. Other than that, she's simple. Yoimiya also has good range allowing you to shoot enemies from a distance. Combined with Xingqiu and Yelan's long reaching attacks if you have them of course means you're triggering vape from afar which is very helpful. Most of the time you'll use her for boss battles. Yoimiya isn't ideal for facing groups of enemies at once, she lacks an effective AoE. Yes, her burst is an AoE but it isn't really considered ideal compared to others. So, when using her to face waves of enemies, especially in Abyss, she can be a bit slow at times. Powerful, but slow in clearing multiple enemies. Another weakness you should be aware of is that her interruptions while attacking is simply put, awful. I sometimes feel like she can get knocked over from a slight breeze. This can cause delays in attacks, which ruins damage potential since she is on a timer from her skill. Shielding will help a lot from getting staggered, but that'll mean you'll have to sacrifice a party slot for that shielder. Overall, she is a great damage dealer, has beautiful looking attacks, but she has her flaws. In terms of being one of the best within the meta, no, sadly I can't say she is, but she is above average and can hit really hard within the right teams. Alright, so moving on to Tartaglia, aka Child, whom a lot of people hate for some reason. I personally don't know why, I like him as a character, but he will have a banner during the second half. He's the fastest Hydro enabler in the game, which is why he's still being used a lot even now with Current Abyss. Of course, he's required to be on field, but there's a misconception that Child is the main DPS of the team. I mean, he could be, but usually not. He's the one who enables reactions for your off-field DPS to hit hard. Reason why he's the enabler is because his normal attacks and riptides apply so much Hydro within a short time frame. As an example, in the international team, Child inflicts Hydro to enemies and then the big damage comes from Shangling's burst hitting them, causing a reverse vape. Child's Hydro application is AoE, making it insanely strong for applying Hydro to surrounding enemies. Beautiful for Abyss. His personal normal attack damage is considered low though when comparing to other damage dealers, but his burst, his burst is quite strong. If you are going for Child, just know that he is somewhat of a technical character. Going back to the Shangling example, he's the one who is helping her trigger reverse vape. But for his burst, you want Shangling to be the enabler and child as the driver. So the thing is, a lot of players are used to using hyper carries with supporters and sub DPS improving the on field damage dealer. Child is kind of the reverse in which he's on field to help off field damage dealers. Now, this depends on your team. Freeze teams, for example, Child will typically be your main DPS, while Cryo units will act as the enabler. The biggest issue you'll encounter is Child's skill cooldown. The longer you're in that melee stance, the longer the cooldown will be, which will affect your rotations. Honestly though, it's not that big of a deal. It does take some time and practice to get used to it. Typically, you do want to end it within 10 seconds and you should be fine. There were at times where it can cause some inconveniences, but if you get used to their strict rotations, he's a very rewarding character. Next is Yamiko, everyone's favorite crafty fox, who has improved a lot thanks to Aggravates. There's a lot of comparisons with her and Fischl, both has their pros and cons, and honestly, both work amazingly together. But let's talk about her strengths. Yaimiko has 100% electro application uptime. The totems she places have a duration of 14 seconds and it only takes 4 seconds to refresh one. This means you'll always have lightning bolts hitting enemies. A little comparison with Fischl, Oz does have a slight cooldown problem if Fischl's burst isn't ready right after her skill ends. Moving on to her burst, it's actually quite powerful, especially with an aggravate, so it only gets better. Also, as a catalyst user, every attack she uses, normal attack and charge attack, applies electro, so this opens up for some different team plays, and again, it's beneficial for aggravate. Now of course, she has several problems. Her biggest attack requires energy. Guess what she sucks at? 
That's right, energy. Which is why Fischl is amazing for Miko, because she's a great battery for her. But Miko's ult requires a lot of energy. Another issue with Yai Miko is that she takes time placing each individual totems. Unlike a lot of sub DPS where you can just tap the skill and then swap out, Miko will require a little bit more field time. It's honestly not that long. The problem comes when she gets smacked in the face while placing them. Finally, Miko cannot snapshot, so if you're using Bandit for example, her placement is important. Okay, so out of the four characters, who deserves your primo gems? This is based on C0 for all characters, cause not everyone can afford higher constellations, I mean, I know I can't. First priority goes to Nahida. Just be aware that she isn't officially out yet, so we don't 100% know how well she'll perform in battle. But given what we know, she's pretty damn amazing. Yes, rotations will be affected when facing waves of enemies. But Nahida is still the best Dendro enabler in the game because she has 100% uptime on her skill, while normal attacks also apply the element, combined with easy tick damage and her ult providing EM support, she's great all around especially for boss battles. But above all else, the most important thing about her kit is that her skill can be used to collect plants from a distance. I mean, that's a game changer. Obviously, I'm joking, but let's not lie to ourselves. It's a really handy skill in the open world. Now, if you are willing to get her at C2, now that's a game changer. Bloom reactions have a chance to crit, and Quicken will shred enemies' defense by a lot. The game isn't really that hard to be honest, but if you want to dominate enemies, then C2 is the way to go. For the next recommended character, it's a close match between the three. A lot of players rate all three of them as A tier units since they're all good. But after Nahida, the next priority is Child. There's a reason why Child International Teams is used a lot in Abyss throughout multiple updates. Even now, it's cause it's that good. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's all thanks to Shang Ling and Bennett or Sucrose or Kazuha, whoever. You're right. But this is a team game. Child is a character that can help enable those big plays. So if you have all but one component to complete one of the best teams in the game, I mean, wouldn't you go for it? He is currently the fastest Hydro Enabler who can deal decent damage at the same time while setting up reactions for your team. And he is one of the most used characters for vape teams. The next character I'd recommend is Yai Mika, who actually works great with, guess who? Nahida. Despite many players preferring Fischl as a sub DPS, Miko can still be used as an Electro Enabler and she deals strong damage with her burst. Of course you're going to run into some issues that I mentioned previously, but the auto turrets are really good. Besides using her off field, if you are using Miko as a main DPS for aggravate, which relies on hitting as fast as possible and if you can cover her ER issues and use burst every rotations, then you're looking at amazing damage output. Miko's usage rate has also been quite consistent during the past few updates. Finally, Yoimiya. And Yoimiya fans, please don't hate me, this doesn't mean she's bad, but between all four characters, she's less desirable. She can deal insane amounts of vape damage, and her ease of use and reach is amazing, let's not deny that. Many times I love using her against bosses that teleports or moves away. But there are three things going against her. First, her single target nature is horrendous for fighting groups of enemies. Sure, you can kill them one by one, but that takes some time and there are AoE DPS characters who can kill groups with ease. It's like, would you shoot enemies one by one with a gun or should you just toss a grenade? Yes, she has AoE on her burst that can also support allies and lead to more AoE damage, but despite being helpful, it's not her big play. Secondly, her interruptions are annoying. Yes, you can dodge to avoid knockbacks, but dashing still causes her to stop attacking. You can easily solve this problem by having a shielder on the team, but when you're forced to cover a weakness, it's still considered a weakness. Lastly, not really a weakness so to speak, but more so the competition she faces. For Pyro and Melt build, which are considered the best Pyro type reactions, you have Hu Tao being her as a single target. And despite not being an on-field DPS unit, Shang Ling is the one triggering reactions and we all know she's actually the real Pyro Archon cause she's too godly to be just a mere chef. Breaking it down, Nahida is one of the best Dendro enabler and driver for the new elemental reaction that will no doubt receive more support. She's top priority. I mean, she's really future-proof. 
Child can apply Hydro the fastest out of all characters, and don't forget it's AoE, and it has been proven to be a strong team member in Abyss over several updates, so there's actual data that he's amazing. Yaimiko can serve as a sub DPS who can enable reactions, or you can use her as a hyper carry. Yuimiya is a reliable damage dealer who unfortunately does not fit into every single situation. At the end of the day, all three characters are strong. Many in the community have actually ranked all three units, Child, Miko, and Yuimiya, to be A tier level characters, and all three of them have been proven to be used quite frequently in Abyss. So honestly, their priority between them is interchangeable depending on who you have. So go for the characters you like a lot more, go for the characters you find more enjoyable to use, and who can benefit your accounts specifically. Comment down below to let me know who you're pulling for. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future Genshin Impact videos. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Till next time.